So I'm sitting here, sitting here with this blank expression. And the way I feel, I want to curl up like a child. Curl like a child, baby. Yo, how y'all feeling this afternoon? It's the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. I'm your host, Sun752. This is Saturday, the 17th of June. We are powering through this first month of summer, even though... I don't know about y'all in your respective cities, but it hasn't felt like summer here. I swear, like, like it's, it's not winter, but it's definitely on some spring shit, and you know, like, whatever, you know, put off, the, stave off the, the the heat wave for as long as possible. That's what I say. I ain't trying to get had no heat wave. However, you know, when the weather is acting funny, so do a whole lot of people. But today, today on the Urban Therapy with Sun Show, we are talking about does poverty equal or equate to boredom? Does poverty equate to boredom? Now, I want y'all to think about this for a minute. I really want you to ponder for a minute. I want you to sit back, relax, do your thing, and chill. Sort of like my brother from another mother, Nars Hill. Listen, does being broke or poverty equate to boredom or trouble? Well, we know that when, when your money is low, when you're growing up in the hood and your money is low, a lot of times uh, we talk about the idle mind being the devil's playground where you can find a lot of devilish things to do when you're in the hood and you don't have no money. You scrambling, trying to get a couple of dollars so you can get access to the things that will make you happy. And and unfortunately, when you are broke, you think that the gateway to happiness is money. It's the one thing that you don't have. And a lot of times because of your limited knowledge of things. And, and, and other people in your environment's limited access to being able to teach you certain things, you don't know about so many of the things that are out here for you to be able to explore and get into that don't even cost a, a lot of money. You know, when we were younger, I, I think about this sometimes, when we were younger, our parents and our teachers taught us to read books. They taught us to read books when we when we were bored. And you know what? It worked. And we found out a lot of things about boredom that a lot of people may not know nowadays. See, nowadays we can go on social media. We can just, you know, queue up our phones and go on websites and, and go to go to social media and what, whatever. And we can see things that will entertain us. Some things that are fictional, a lot of things that are fictional, some things that may be factual. And we are able to, to ward off boredom in that way. But when we were younger, we didn't have those things. We had to go out and do things or we had to um, have people around us that would give us ideas. We would brainstorm or sometimes sometimes when it was when the weather was bad and and there weren't a lot of people around. Our parents would not allow us to just sit around the house and and, you know, sit with our lips poked, poked out and just be bored. They would tell us to read. And when we read, not only did we get better at the reading, but we also um, got better into getting into the pages. So um, one one clear fact about people who read is that their imagination, their imagination is often stronger than those who don't read. It's something, something about the power of the written word that allows you to remember things better and it allows you to think and figure out things better. It's almost like math, you know? It's a good thing. But now our children are not encouraged to read as much as they are, as much as, as much as they may have been when we were growing up. So, I mean, plenty of times, you know, some of us went to the library if we, if we uh, got bored, we went and got more books. You know what else they had at the library that I remember. And, and you'll remember now, if you have forgotten, remember you could, you could, uh, you could check out or rent out um, uh, records records and tapes after a while I, I believe that nowadays you may even be able to rent out video games and things like that the library is a is a really valuable resource for the youth and for 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 anyone to be able to get access to information and to be able to keep yourself busy one thing that we may lose sight of when we talk about boredom and when we talk about the hood is that Boredom is more about your mental state. It's more psychological than it is physical. 
but with the internet telling us that we got to go out there and do things. And then, you know, us coming up out of the COVID era, which had had many of us saying, you know, I'm outside now. I'm outside. You know, we have to really think about what we're talking about when we say we, that we're outside, baby. We outside. We are available. We out here. We out here. We out here. But what we doing out here? You know, for for a couple of, for at least one year, because I don't. We weren't quarantined for two years, but at least for one year, we weren't able to go outside. Uh, freely and just congregate with each other, meet each other. We couldn't even see each other's faces because we had the we had the masks on. Oh, shout out to my people who can't say masks, and they say masses. So you know, um, we had our masses on. We had on some people had on masks, and some people had on their masses. I had on a mask, but my man's he had on his mask. No, I'm not talking about. A religious um, ritual, uh, you know, by, by Catholics. Mask. I mean, mass. All right. See, I see y'all want to play. Y'all want to play. You know, y'all keep this up. Y'all keep this up. I'm gonna start asking for some money when when people start coming up here in here. I'm gonna start asking for money. But anyway, so yeah, we went to the library. A lot of people went to the library. You know. You know, rent out some 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 records, some books, whatever, and just make sure that you return them joints when you was finished with them. Um, nowadays you know, just get on the internet, watch some crazy reels, maybe even go on Pornhub or somewhere like that. See, we ain't had nothing like that. I don't know. I don't know where we would have been if we if we um. If we if we could if we could have watched pornographic material without having to confront a store clerk, really, I mean, y'all gotta think about that. When we wanted to check out pornographic material, we either had to, you know, show somebody at the newsstand what we were buying, or we went to the video store. You know, they knew like, ah, uh, uh huh. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, that's not Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's Raiders of the mm. late Raiders. Raiders of the Boss Bark. You know, Bark Wood. Raiders of the Big Bark. So we had to stand in front of somebody. Look, look, look. look. We we went to we went to buy condoms. We had to. We had to go to the drugstore and everybody knew either we was either we was having sex or we was we was facilitating somebody else having it. You know what I'm saying? Like nowadays you go to the Chinese store, you could you, you know get a few um single magnums. Don't trust by the way, don't trust those those don't trust those Chinese store magnums, man. I, I some something ain't right about that pack. Something ain't right. A lot of y'all ain't working with magnum magnum material anyway, but I understand. I do. I understand. Yeah, you know I mean, with your baggy, with your baggy condom on, but at least you practicing safe sex. I ain't mad at you. T. Carrie Wright, what's going on? It's good to see me some you for real. All right, she says boredom is a mental boredom is mental, but some people think that it's a physical thing. True, and she says we lived full lives without social media and without boatloads of money yeah we had to be we had to be creative because it wasn't about money it wasn't about money and i you know i, I want to say this and i can't say this with with, with total certainty but i'm going to say that i'm not so sure that we had as many social events going on when we were growing up in the 70s and 80s as we have now i i, I don't know now some people may argue that we had more because we actually had to get out and do things, um, promote, advertise. You know, a flyer back in the day really meant something. It may not mean nothing now, but back in the day, a flyer meant something. You see a flyer on a on a telephone pole, you're like, oh, such and such is going to be at the skating rink this week. Okay. 
That's what I'm talking about. Yo, we going skating this week. We going to skate and I don't know, you know, Stessa Sonic and I don't know, Stessa Sonic and, and, and Roxanne Shantae might be at the at, at the skating rink. We, we on the skating rink. We saw it. We know it's going to be you know, on, uh, I don't know, uh, what's next Saturday? Uh, June 25th. June 25th, you know, or 24th. June 24th. Roxanne Shantae and, and Stessa Sonic gonna be at the, at the skating rink. We going, you know what I mean? We going. I got. I'm getting a haircut. I'm getting a haircut cut on Friday. I'm gonna be fresh for Saturday. I might go Saturday morning. So I don't know if we had as many social events, but the social events that we had meant something. It meant they. It really did. They meant something. And um. And um, nine times out of ten, the social events that we went to, we actually had fun, genuine fun. I, I will attest to that. I will I will attest to that. And they weren't they were affordable. Hip hop in its early stages was very very affordable. Shoot, I remember having floor seats, floor seats at the at the Philadelphia Spectrum. The Spectrum is a stadium where the where we used to have concerts back in the day, and it really it was a it was way better than the big the bigger um, venues that we have now because the acoustics the acoustics the way that the Spectrum was set up the sound the sound when you went to go see a concert at the Spectrum that thing was rocking. Then they built you know sometimes people get it right and they just forget the formula of of how I mean there, aren't there scientists. Aren't there researchers that that go in and 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 and, and uh, develop how how sound is going to be is going to be um, um, conveyed to, to 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 large crowds when they build a venue? Don't they know? I mean, it don't seem like it. But I but anyway, so I remember being able to go to the Spectrum to go see a, a, um, a rap concert. $16, $18, the floor seats, floor seats. Now we wasn't right, right up front, but I'm talking about like 10 rows back. You can still see very well. The stage was up high. You know what I mean? $18, $18. Now, of course, this is, I'm be talking about 1986, 87, 88, but nonetheless, I mean, even for the inflation of that time, that was affordable. These tickets these days, I'll be like, cats ain't even on the floor. You know, you go see how much you, I ain't even going to talk about Beyonce. I ain't even going to talk about Beyonce. How much do you think that it costs to go see The Weeknd or or Bruno Mars or Katy Perry or somebody like that? Man, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You ain't getting in the building to see none of them for under $100. What are we doing? And in today's economy, $100 is not affordable. So if you want to go see a show, you will have to, you know, if you want to be, if you want to go see a show, and especially if you want to take your kids to go see a show, just know that you're going to be spending a lot of money. Oh, well, anyway, so um, piggybacking off of what, what T. Carrie Wright was talking about, a lot of people think that boredom is, is a physical thing. So they think that they have to be doing something physically in order to escape boredom. Now, I will say this. When you are doing something physical, you, you're not going to be bored. I don't care whether you're doing something that you want, you don't want to do physically, like working, you know what I mean, or digging a hole or, or um, exercising or whatever the, the case may be. You're not going to be bored. You know, but but many of those things may be things that you don't like to do. So instead of doing those physical things, you may sit around like, oh, I don't have nothing to do. Nothing to do. You know, a shout out to the people on social media that take a bunch of self selfies talking about I was bored, bored, bored. Like, listen, I, I you want likes. I get it. You don't have to. You don't have to front like you was. Bo I mean, nobody's buying that. They're not. You don't even look bored in the damn pictures. You should, your picture should look like.
Did you imagine that shit? Instead, the pictures be like. Like those ain't boredom shots, shorty. Those ain't boredom shots. It looked like you trying to, you trying to catch something out there. You trying to catch something out there. The damn internet. That that got me thinking about a meme that I saw the other day and it made me so, so mad. It said, the meme was a question and it said, if, what, what I don't I, I I can't remember the word that they call um women who who do waxing for females you know waxing their crotch and all that kind of stuff whatever whatever the name of them is they said what it said what would you do if the waxer um licked your pussy after after she got finished um, giving you the wax, give you know, waxing you or whatever. And damn near every woman was with that shit. I would ask for more wax, or I would definitely tip her good, or I would, um, I would um, be sure to come back next time. And I was like, There were only two women on that whole thread out of the ones who commented. One said that, that she would smack the shit out of her. And they hit and Facebook hit that comment. And the other one said, the other one said something like, no, wait, wait, wait a minute now. Or some shit like that. Everybody else was like, mm, shoot, I would tell her to finish the job. Or I was like, that's what we doing? That that's that's where we are. Well, yeah. Y'all know me. I added a comment. I was like, "This is the most fucked up. This is the most fucked up um um post that I've seen in a long time." TK Wright says the waxer would draw back a black eye. I mean. Maybe they maybe they took it as a joke, but I don't think so. To me, like questions like that are very indicative of what we have going on out here. But I just wanted to put I just wanted to put y'all on to that shit because you know that shit got under my skin. Then things like that get under my skin. I'd rather be bored than that than to read some shit like that. But I don't mind is the devil's playground, and evidently it's the LGBTQ playground as well. I mean, you know what. You know, because thinking about it realistically, if something like that happened, first of all, I, I it, it was it was it was fitting that that post was for women. It was fitting because had it had it been a man who said who 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 was confronted with the same um, scenario, maybe maybe something like, "What would you do if your uh, barber finished lining you up perfectly?" And then kissed you on the mouth. Imagine a bunch of men on a post being like, shoot, shoot, I'll be right back there next Saturday. Or, or oh yeah, shoot. Um, I, I would make sure that I had my breath mints in, or you know, like so the double standard when it comes to this bullshit, the double standards that when it when it comes to, to things like this is crazy. But the, the, here's where we are. Here's where we are as a society. And this is, and this, these are the things that we think are funny. And these are the things that we think are harmless. And these are the things that get rid of our boredom. So, you know, you know, without having a whole lot of money, you can go on social media and, and 
fulfill your your um your boredom until your heart's desire and in and in, in any way that your heart's de- de- desire i just wanted to put y'all on with that you know what i mean and i don't want to be the bull i don't want to be the bull that's always championing um 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 straight pride and or wants to seem like he's totally anti-gay even though i might be you know what i mean but is this these are the things that just irk me they do they this this stuff gets on my nerves and i know so many people co-sign this shit and it's all good it's all good when you think you're gonna get some ass out of something or when something is going to be um um freaky and and advantageous freakily freakily advantageous to you it's all good we it's all key 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 ha 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 it's all good till your son wants to turn double dutch till your son wants to turn double dutch and he want a holly hobby house with an easy bake oven it's all good till he want to play with barbie instead of ken you know what i'm talking about when you have to deal with the fallout of the funny yo that shit is worth a whole lot more than the money and you can't spend your way out of this so you're gonna have to fry it up like a piece of it all right anyway so anyway 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 like tk Wright was saying you know a lot of people think that that you have to be doing something physical in order to stave off bar- boredom now now if you are doing something um physical like playing sports now, I said working out before, but like playing sports, it's one of the best ways to stave off boredom when you live in the hood or if you just, you know, wherever you live, if you just don't have a lot of money. You know what I mean? Pick up a basketball, go running, whatever. You won't be bored. You might be tired, but you won't be bored. You know, um, a lot of times boredom comes out of not knowing not knowing what to do or not have having access to do things when you have been doing the same things over and over and over again not everybody likes to 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 experience that that level of repetition some people want to try new things explore new things go out uh um see new faces you know have new experiences that is one way to really really get your mind get your mind into another mode of of exploration and and elevation you know getting your mind to the raising your 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 thought process to another level because you're learning so when you're learning you stave off boredom so you so it, it kind of makes you wonder all right if you if, if you are school aged if you're a school aged person young person you know you're learning things all the time but if you're not good in school then you're probably not really learning at, on the level that you want to or need to so school may be boring to you because you're not picking up the material but i'm not sure if boredom is the word it actually may make you anxious because you don't know what you're doing and you know how you know how you know how uncomfortable it can be when it seems like everybody else is enjoying something that you can't enjoy because you don't know what's going on you know how how uh uncomfortable it can make you when when it seems like you're the only one that does not understand and therefore you can't appreciate and you know how hellish can be hellish it can be when you have to act like you're enjoying something or that you are understanding something that you really aren't enjoying or aren't understanding it's like having sex and being being forced to act like you're really enjoying it and you're like oh this is this is this is horrible this is horrible you know because it's sex this is horrible and somebody is saying to you you like that this is good ain't it yeah tell me it's good and you're like 
I can't tell you it's good, shorty. You're scratching me up. It feels terrible. Sort of like I'm having sex with sandpaper. Terrible. Sort of like I'm having sex with sandpaper. Terrible. Sort of like I'm having sex with sandpaper. Can't we do something? Need some can- KY. Because the sex is like sandpaper. Feel, feel, feeling like a sandpaper. Yeah, the sex, sex, sex is like a sandpaper. We got to do something to make you get a little bo- m- more ju- 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 juice. Because... Cause the sex is like a sandpaper. Yeah, cause the sex is like a sandpaper. I'm going to have to go to the doctor right after we're done. Cause I was made to act like I was enjoying myself when it wasn't fun. And the sex is like a sandpaper. Sex is like a sandpaper. I feel like I was dealing with a raper. I, sex is like a sandpaper. Sex is like a sandpaper. What is y'all talking about? I hope nobody taper because I see that this shit is making me look bad. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to decline to have sex with this next time because it makes me mad. Nah, no, no, actually makes me sad. Nah, uh, uh, uh. I said the sex is like a sandpaper. Sex is like a sandpaper. Sex is like a sandpaper. Sex is like a Sex is like a sandpaper. Sex is like a sandpaper. Sex is like a sandpaper. Go into the next caper. So... Ow, bit my lip just now. You know what I mean? I can't even control my own teeth. Ow. Did I get myself? I was leading. I was leading. I think I just I just I think I just escaped breaking the skin. But yeah. So you know, doing some doing some physical things can definitely stave your boredom. Boredom. But you know, hold on. I was talking about sex. I've heard people say that having sex with somebody that they have had sex with previously was boring. Like sex with such and such is boring. And maybe, and and normally it's because they need more mental stimulation when they're having sex. And I don't even think people sometimes understand that until later on, maybe when it's pointed out to them by somebody else. Like I think the problem that you're experiencing has more to do with this than that it's like oh yeah maybe like she ain't got no freak in her she ain't she ain't freaky we only or he only do it to me one way he never wants to change positions blah 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 so he said that like sex with such and such is boring and when you know what i think is you know what i think is is interesting about that because they may say like i've heard women say like like the dick is good you know the dick itself is good but you know he's boring and I've heard dudes say the same thing. Like, yo, she, I mean, she got a pretty good shot, but, you know, she won't let me hit it from the back or, you know what I mean? She won't hang from the shang, sh- chandelier or, you know, all she wanted, the only place she ever want to do it is in the bed. She just want to open her legs. I want to hit it from the side. I want to hit it from the side. So even a physical, um, I mean, sexually stimulating act like having sexual intercourse can be boring to some people. So I hear, so I hear. I've never had sex and was bored. It may have been, it may have been boring leading up to the sex. You know what I mean? But the sex itself, even if it was terrible, it wasn't boring. It was just bad. It was just bad. But let me ask y'all that. H- have you ever had sex with somebody and considered it to be boring? I know it's only three of y'all in here right now. I ain't mad at it. I don't care. I don't care how many of y'all is in here. The show must go on. But speaking of that, make sure y'all share the show. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, um, shout out to my mom calling me right now um because she refuses to know she refuses to acknowledge what time um you know my show comes on so shout out to you mommy who's who's um call i'm not answering right now because you know for the umpteenth time you know like so what time you say you do your show yeah so when i tell y'all when i tell y'all you know that like she don't respect this shit this shit i lie but I guess with only three people in here, I guess she ain't the only one who don't respect it, huh? Hmm. 
TK Wright says, call her back just in case. I will as soon as we're done. But not now. No, 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 no. Oh, it says four. Okay. And now it says four on my side. Nonetheless, it ain't always what you get up front. You know, we 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 make our money on the back end. We make our money on the back end. But anyway, anyway, have you ever had sex with somebody that you considered to be boring? You know, the sex with them was boring. I mean, there are no right or wrong answers. Your experience in the way that you feel is what it is. So T. Carrie Wright says, yes. Yes, she has ha had sex with someone before that she considers to be boring. And when I say, now I've dealt with boring women, but the, you know, like having sex with them wasn't boring. It was just, it might, it's just not, boring is just not the word that I would use. My brother Ansel Jones is in the house. What's going on? What's up with my brother Ansel Jones? Emily Dunlap in the house. I said Emily. Look at this. Emily coming out of the background talking about some mama more important than this show. We wait. We'll wait while you go in the kitchen so we can wait till you come. Look, I already know what my mama want. Y'all don't know, but me and my mama already had a conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I know my mama what, and uh, my mama, my mama is gonna be all right. And you ask me how I know because you know how I know my mom is all right because if my mom ain't all right, she ain't the one who calls. You know who calls? Dita and Shell, my big sisters. Dita and Shell, my big sisters. So when they call, like if I ever talk to my mom today and they call, I'm like, uh, because. If they call her and they can't reach her, then they call me because I live closest to her. So they like, he can get to her first. So Shell calls. She'd be like, yeah, um, you speak to mommy today. And I'm like, the only reason you would ask that is because you ain't spoke to her. And now you worry. So I'm about to have to jump in the whip and fly around there because... <laughs> <laughs> Mommy ain't answering the phone. By the grace of God, it's never, it's, 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 there's never been a big problem. Matter of fact, sometimes my mom has got on her, on her mean joint. Like I ain't feel like answering the phone. Like that's what we doing. Well, yeah. But since you here, you hungry? No. I'm just on the verge of having a panic attack. You know, it's all good. Don't worry about us. Don't worry about me. Worry not. Worry not. Now back to the matter at hand. Have, have you ever had sex with somebody you considered to be, uh, whether you considered the sex to be boring? Now, <laughs> When we when we when we go back to the title of the show, does poverty equate to boredom or trouble? Now, if you think about if you just sitting around not really doing anything, you thinking like, yo, man, I could I could call I could call Tanya, not big butt Tanya, because only I call her. But if I call Tanya, I can get a couple of nuts off or whatever, even though she be acting stupid. Like, Fuck it, I'm gonna make her do I'm gonna make her do what I needed to do tonight. But those decisions can lead to those decisions can lead to children being born. Now you was already broke, and now you add no one, you add no more family members to, to add to your broken your broke tally. Your poverty tally is growing. Your broke bill is going up. They just it just went up one child. Super expensive. Super expensive. Um, it could also lead to you having um irresponsible, unprotected sex with the wrong person. Now your broke ass is now you got a clinic visit too. Shout out to Moxicillin. Shout out to Z Pack. 
Shout out to Tet 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 Cycling. Shout out to Dossy 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 Cycling. Shout out to the antibiotics. Shout out to the antibiotics. You wouldn't need no antibiotics, but you still, yo, you got bored and went and got the cat. You know how it go. You went around the block. Yo, Tanya, toot up that ass. I'm about to get up in there and bust a nut fast. And I know that I should make it last forever. But I'm not right now. It's whatever. Yo, Tanya. Not Big Butt Tanya, though. Shout out to Big Butt. You know what I mean? I ain't I ain't shout out my baby. Yo. Shout out to Big Butt Tanya. But the sex is never boring. Because Big Butt Tanya know what to do. She know what to do. Yes, she do. I don't know about you, but Tanya know what to do. I don't know about you, but Tanya know what to do. I don't know about you, but Tanya know what to do. When she come on through, I feel like I'm with the crew. Always got a little boredom to shave off. She make sure that that boredom was be staved off. And I ain't worried about thing because I'm her king. She's my queen. We get it on when this is seen. It's a freak scene. It's a crazy scene. It's always satisfying. Had me buying shit, spend money at the top of the dime. I'd be like, if loving you is a crime. Yes, loving you is a crime. Is it a crime? Is it a crime that I still want you? And I want you to want me too. Is it a crime? Is it a crime that I still want you? And I want you to want me too. Your love is wider, wider than Victoria Lake. Your love is taller, taller than the Twin Tower. Okay, never mind. And I know that was, you know, I, I know, I know that was. Love is stronger than pride, but I mixed it in. I mixed it in. Shout out to the Diamond Life album. My girl, Sade. Shout out to the Diamond Life album. Let's see. T.K. Wright says, the sex was boring. They had great sexual energy, but couldn't bring that energy into the act. Oh. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> TK right says our lives were lived outdoors and for the and and free for most times and for free most times no doubt and so Jones says asking someone to always go out to a party and eat is stressful do I really want to be in the house um do I really want to be uh, um in the house by myself mm -hmm. interesting 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 so let me ask y'all this though because because just because I think I think that boredom is more of a psychological thing, and T. Carry Wright seems to think that boredom is more of a psychological thing. But what do y'all think? Do y'all think that boredom is more 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 mental, or do you think that it's a physical thing? Because we have used examples where where we have shown that when you're doing something physical, you're normally not bored. But it's a lot of times when you are bored. You know, you don't have anything to occupy your mental space. And maybe sometimes when you're doing a, a physical thing like having sex, maybe you can still be bored because it's not stimulating. You, you're not incorporating the mental element that you may need. I mean, you may be born born under the sign of, of I don't know, Aquarius, Libra or, or, or Gemini in which the physical part of it is never going to um, totally fulfill you not ha not going to happen not going to happen just like if you're a water sign like a pisces or a cancer or a scorpio sex sex alone is not going to fulfill you unless somebody starts crying or starts hollering in pain what 
Don't act like, don't act like you've, don't act like you've never gotten into a full blown argument right in the middle of having sex with a Scorpio. What? Y'all might've got it resolved. You might've got it resolved, but don't act like, don't act like you've never had sex with a Pisces and she just broke down crying. I said, no, no, everything is cool. <laughs> T.K. Ray says, sometimes when I'm home doing nothing, I feel like I've gotten the most done. Yeah, well, if you're the type of person that's busy all the time, you might really value the times when you don't have to do shit. You know what I'm saying? Like when you when, when you're the type of person that's 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 always the Uber driver, always the designated driver, you the pick up and drop off person. You are the emergency person. Oh, help us! Help us! We're stuck in the laundry man in the market. Help, we got to go to this concert or we got an after school function. Mom, dad, help us. It's raining outside. We can't, we can't catch the train. Help, help, help. Yeah, might be like that. She says, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> <laughs> that's that sex with a Pisces. <laughs> you took advantage of me. <laughs> that's that sex with a Pisces. <laughs> you don't make a you don't make a uh, you don't make a Pisces um um come. If they don't have an orgasm, be like, you took advantage of me. <laughs> I, they say you ranked, ranked them. You took advantage of me. You must think I'm stupid or something. <laughs> like, <they> had no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I refuse to be your sexual punching bag any longer. After this last time. Shout out to all the Pisces. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> oh, see? I was bored doing this show earlier. Now I'm having fun. It must be it must be a mental, psychological. Let me make it maybe, let me make it physical. Carrie Wright says Pisces are good. Pisces are a good time. I agree. I agree. Except when they be crying, crying and complaining, complaining and crying, crying, get the crying and complaining, complaining and crying, crying. Except for that. Emily says, "Now you want to shout us? I shouted y'all out in the, in, the, in the beginning. That don't mean I ain't. That don't mean yeah, I mean." That don't mean I forget about all the crying time. Wah. Wah. But don't but don't take it personal, Emily. Because when it comes to crying and complaining, nobody beats Virgo. No, Virgos don't like to cry in front of you. But complain all day, all day, all day, all day, all day. You missed the spot. You missed the spot. You, you, you missed the spot. 
Yo, you failed to make me happy 100%. You missed the spot. You missed the spot. Yeah, you think you all of that and I kept my mouth shut, but you missed the spot. You missed the spot. Yeah, I see that your opinion is higher yourself, but you missed the spot. You missed the spot. Uh, yeah, you really think you got it going on, but you missed the spot. You missed the spot. Yo, I saw you got a new card and that thing is hot, but you missed the spot. You must the spot. And hey, yo, I see that you copped the new house that you got. You missed the spot. You missed the spot. Yeah, I see you going on vacations and you're happy. Yo, missed the spot. You missed the spot. Yo, I see. Yo, you got to go. Uh, you missed. You missed. You missed. You missed. You missed. You missed. You you, you, you miss, 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 you miss the spot. I am a Virgo, you know how it go. I ain't no goddamn Leo, so I'm not looking at the big picture. I'm going to itemize every little piece of the picture. And I, I treat it like a jigsaw puzzle. And the picture is not complete. You understand? I'm going to make sure that we get us a little com perfection and go out to eat. But you missed the spot. And I ain't going to act like I don't know you. Your glasses fit on your face funny, yo. Yo, you really trying to just come at my neck? You better act like you're about to show me some respect. And cut a check while you're at it. Because if we going to do this shit, it ain't automatic. You, you know, suck ass nigga. You spot missing ass nigga. Oh, whack ass sister. Don't come up very go. When I'm protecting the Pisces, you know how that shit go. Yo, it's getting kind of spicy. Ah, ah, I don't want to be bored, yo. Yo, the Libra just told me that I scored, but, uh, she said, she said, she said that her scales was in balance. This shit is kind of crazy. She said it was balance. She said, yo, can't get it together today. You'll come back another day and listen to what I say. I'm like three steps ahead of your thinking price and process, process patterns. You know what I'm talking about? Like Saturn, it's the rings around that bitch. You got to pay attention. The gas around your head. Yo, you got extension. And, and I would like to mention that you ain't getting none of this tonight. My skills ain't balanced right. My, my. Go get you a Gemini. Ah, go get you a Gemini. Uh, go. All right, all right, all right. Okay. All right. So, Ansel Jones says, I've never been in a relationship only for sex. We just didn't like the title of boyfriend and girlfriend. That's what's up. And he also says, there need to be a relationship tax break. A relationship tax break? Huh. Well, if you gay, you can get that. It's called civil union. You can <laughs> I mean it ain't going it ain't gonna apply to you, my brother. No, no. But just know that it does exist out there for for uh, for other people. No you, no you. All right, let, let me get back to the topic, y'all. Let me get back to the topic because. You know, when we talk about, when we talk, talk about does, when we ask the question of does poverty equate, equate to boredom, it can, because, you know, by you not having maybe educational opportunities or, or the money to go out and, and have the kind of fun that you see on TV, see, all the fun that you see on TV is paid for. It's paid for by the commercials and the shows that are, that are on TV in the first place. So they're always going to uh, encourage you to do things that take money out of your pocket. They don't advertise free things to do on TV. They, that, that's not where you're going to find that. So I'm not saying that people with money or people who have money don't get into things. But what I am saying is that when, when you're broke, the things that you may do in order to, to get rid of your boredom may have something to do with trying to make money by illegal means, which puts you in the realm of, um, you know, being locked up, incarcerated, things like that. So putting your freedom at stake. Also, um, hurting, hurting other people, 
you know, in, in case where you might, you know, perform a stick up or something like that. Yeah, one thing about one thing about people who rob people at gunpoint, many of them do it for more than the money. Many of them do it for the rush. They like to see the fear in people's eyes and the power that they have on um, over them because they have a gun in their hand and people are fearing for their lives. So they give up their shit. So I've heard stick up dudes talk about the pleasure that it gives them when they see somebody, when they catch a nigga out there, you know, slipping, he's shining and he, and, and he, and he's sleeping at the same time. So he might be out there looking like, he, you know, he getting all his money and all of that. And when you put that, you flash that gun in his face and he taking off the chain, like, yo man, just take it. You, just, you know, the fear in his eyes just really gave them a rush. Stick up, stick up kids love that rush. That's why a lot of them, the, a lot of them never, never bust a gun, but some of them do because they want to take that fear to the next level. They actually want to finish it off. Now, how destructive can that be? How much more destructive can, can something be than to, than to, to rob somebody at gunpoint and inflict violence on them? So maybe you stuck the gun in their face and smacked them with the smacked them with the pistol. Bam! And took their shit. So it's like, oh my God. Uh, yeah. Watch the blood just. Yeah. So trying to get money in the hood so you can find some excitement might lead you to selling drugs. Or sticking up people, robbing people, burglaries, all that kind of stuff. Does it all come out of boredom? No. But it can. It can be a birthplace of the motivation that may be present because uh, you don't you have limited access to the things that you would like to do that will allow you to have some fun. Like I can't afford a car. But if I do these 10 stick-ups, I can go out there and buy me a nice little whip. I can go out there and buy me a nice little whip. I was um watching um no, I wasn't watching. I was listening to uh Prodigy of Mob, Mob Deep. May he rest in peace. And Prodigy was talking about how how he used to go, you know, how, how when he bought his first car when he was a young boy, you know, he bought the car, no registration, no insurance, no, no license. You know, you know, he knew where to go get a car where they would just, you know, sell you a car, you know, for a few, for a few G's or whatever. And you, you know, you got a new whip, not brand new, but the car itself wasn't legit. And you ain't had no paperwork. You just floating around the city. No, 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 uh, no license, no insurance, no, no, no registration, no nothing. But you in this whip. Shit like that would happen in the hood. Whereas if you had money, you might still be able to buy the same car without a license because you might put the license in somebody else. I mean, you might put the registration in somebody else's name who has a license. And who can get you the insurance? Even you, even if you don't pay the insurance, the bottom line is you got the money. You have the money. You don't have to employ illegal means in order to try to get your cake up. Yeah, riding dirty and so what's going on, Stacy White? What's going on, Stacy White? Today, not tonight. But yeah. Um. When you have money, you can watch that TV or go on that internet and see things that you can actually afford. So your options, your options change, which can, which can decrease your boredom a lot. Not saying that it's going to make you happy. I'm not saying money is the route to happiness or is the, is, is the, um, the cure the cure for boredom, but it will give you access. Even if it just gives you access to different people who have different ideas. When they present those ideas, you can actually afford them. 
So if somebody says, you know, well, you know, um, we can go on a midnight cruise on a river or the lake, depending on where you live at. Oh, yeah. How much that cost? Oh, I mean, you know, it's you know, it's a little pricey, but you know, for 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 150 dollars, we can go out there and we can spend the whole night out there, but it's open bar though. It's open bar 150 dollars. Yeah, it'd be nice, man. I mean, you know, we went before, you know, you'd be out there, it'd be good people there, sexy people, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You get your drink on, chill. You know, watch the stars, whatever. It's it's a, it's a good look. You know, go ahead and throw that shit on. Throw that shit on. Let's get on. Yeah, you you got the hundred and fifty dollars. You got the two hundred dollars. You got the five hundred dollars. Whatever the whatever the cost is, you have that and enough to be able to 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 take care of anything that you want to take care of when you go out. So now now don't get it twisted because just because you have money. To get yourself out of boredom doesn't mean that you won't do the same things that the people who are impoverished will, will do in order to um to stave off their boredom. For example, now in the hood, you know there are a lot of drugs in the hood. So if you're sitting around being bored, you may just go ahead and get high, roll up an L, you know, um go out and go, um, you know drink something if you have a bar at your crib, if you have some liquor at the crib or whatever. You, you might pop some pills, some Zannies, or if you can't, you're bored and you and you have um, insomnia or some shit like that. Now you pop in, you pop some 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 V's or some some Zannies or some you know whatever. You know what I mean? One thing about one thing about taking drugs is that it it gets rid of boredom quick. Mm -hmm. It does. It gets rid. It is the boredom killer. The death of boredom is stored in substance abuse. So you might say, you might say that the people who have money, they are in a worse position when it comes to drugs than people who are broke. Because when people are broke, they can only get as high as their money will take it, take them. But people who have money, that money long. And so is the time that they spend high off drugs and shit. People with money always taking drugs and shit. Why y'all rich niggas don't have nothing better to do but take drugs and shit? Why? Mm, why? Mm. Why? Mm, why? Mm, why? Mm. And so Jones says greed is the root of all evil. Sounds good to me. It sounds good to me. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It sounds actual and factual. As long as you know that I can have any John I want to, baby, that's actual and factual. But I choose you because you got a fatty and big titty, so you better give it up. And I'm going to tell y'all something. You don't, you haven't seen boredom until you meet a sexy chick with fat ass and big titties who can't read you a bedtime story. Boring, boring. Like, no, man, this sexy chick can't read worth shit. And then, and, and then the prince, the prince, the prince, um, the prince g got in the state, the state, the stay, the star, the star, stagecoach, baby, stagecoach. Yeah, the stage. She, the prince, got in the stagecoach to go to the ball and to find his, find the woman that would later be his princess
As long as you know that I can have any joint I want to, baby, that's actual and factual, but I choose you, so. All right. We about to do these birthday shout outs, man. You know what I mean? Like, look, I'm here because I'm trying to, you know, give back to the community. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what type time I'm on. But y'all, y'all want to front. And um, this ain't the day. This ain't the day to be fronting. You're going to stop this fronting. You're fronting on me. You're fronting on me. Anyway, we have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious June 17th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S B E C I A L. They get the R E S B E C T. They are S B E C I A L. They get the R E S B E C T. They are S B E C I A L. They get the R E S B E C T. They get number one out the box. Maria Gonzalez, turning 48 years old today. And my cuz, my big cuz, Belinda Collier, known and affectionately known to the family as Tiny. Tiny turning 68 years old today. Unbelievable. And also Jay Dixon, turning 41 years old today. And Cooper Sandra, turning 69 years old today. And Daniel Wilson, happy birthday to you, my brother. And Shamey. Kamara turning 31 years old today, and Aisha Muhammad turning 44 years old today, and Terrence Nance, happy birthday to you, and Willette McCoy, happy birthday to you, and Anita Atwell turning 43 years old today, and Yolanda Jenkins, happy birthday to you, and Nancy McKenzie turning 41 years old today, and Marilyn Miles turning 48 years old today, and Candice Candy Ware turning 43 years old today, and Faithful Kingdom Faith, you know, a lot of birthdays on the 17th, right? Turning 51 years old today, and Real Deal, turning 51 years old today, and last but not least, my brother, this was like my best friend growing up, my man Derek Witherspoon, happy, ha happy, happy, ha happy, bur ha a happy, bur ha ha happy, bur uh -uh. happy, bur ha happy, happy birthday to all y'all. I hope that today finds y'all all in good health, happiness, mind, body, soul, and spirit. And this goes out to each and every person who's celebrating this birthday on this glorious, glorious, glorious June 17th. Anywhere out there in the world, worldwide, internationally, and universally, all of y'all go ahead and turn up. Turn up. But don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. I lock out. Rock on it. Do the damn, the damn, the lock out. Rock on it. Do the, 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 the damn rock out. Rock on it. Do the damn thing. You do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. You do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And any, any, to any, to, uh, anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard. Go for yours. And remember, man. Yo, when you're bored in the hood, things lead up to no good, and I have to make this understood. Sometimes you might get hooked up in some crime. Sometimes you might get in the grease and the grime. Sometimes you might start selling the drugs. Sometimes you might use the drugs and be bugged. And sometimes you might, yo, sacrifice your life. But you can rig everything right. Just because you don't have a lot of money in your account doesn't mean that you can't have fun in large amounts. And everything is going to be okay, even if you got a couple of dollars, you can still be bored today. But yo, yo, an idle mind is the devil's playground, and then you don't have to mess around. The town is full of all kinds of things for you to learn. You can make it burn, kind of like Usher. Don't let life put you over the edge. Yo, wax it like pleasure. And I'm going to tell you something that my old head said. He said, yo, whatever you do is on you. You got to make your decisions, make them good ones too. And if you don't do that shit, it's going to be a real problem problem it ain't nobody out here besides god that can solve them and uh he gonna solve them after you 
already learned your lessons. You got to make sure that you don't block your blessings. This is a lesson that I'm going to teach you now. And if you don't want to listen now, that's all right. You will. How you live your life is really all on you. I had to repeat that shit because sometimes you do not listen and don't let your sign glisten. But, yo, I'm telling you, and I'm not dissing. I don't care if you got a lot of dough or if you don't have any kind of money to show. Yo, my friendship is not based on that. So we going to later on get into all of that. Peace to all my day ones, my every days, and my brand news. I love y'all to death, resuscitate y'all. Love y'all right back to life. We will be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. for another Urban Therapy with Sun Show. I want to thank y'all for coming through. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. All right, so I'm going to let y'all get to your... Oh, happy ber- oh, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. If I don't see y'all, hear y'all, get with y'all. Happy Father's Day to all of the all of the great fathers out there. And for the ones that are on the come up, you keep trying. Don't let nobody, don't let nobody keep you from your babies. And don't be waiting until Father's Day to get your Father's Day on. Love is love, baby. So blog talk, we gonna get you out of here. A uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And for my YouTubers, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. See you on the other side, my boobers. Peace. On the other side, my boobers.